post fast feeding. Um, so get a lot of questions about this. What's the ideal way to break a fast? So you talked a little bit about this. Um, you know, is there a method to the madness with macro timing? Uh, and this is from Brian Avchin. Is there a method to the ma madness with macro timing? And as it pertains to glycogen levels, or is it fine to eat anything in particular once you reach your, your or once you break your fasting window, once you end your fasting window? So what should we be consuming ideally um, after this fast? Well, I think we kind of address that, you know, if we're talking about the prolonged fast or someone that's doing a fast sure. for greater than 48 hours. Um, you know, you're you're basically at that at that point after your IGF one has gone lower and you've you've done some of the autophagy and clearing away um, of the of the damaged parts of the cell and also apoptosis, the damaged cell itself. You want that IGF one active, and what activates IGF one are amino acids. So um, and it, particularly essential amino acids. Um, so so eating some protein actually to break a fast seems like it would be a good idea because you want that IGF-1 higher. Um, the other thing that actually regulates IGF-1 bioavailability is carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. um, so, so carbohydrates allow IGF-1 to be more bioavailable. Uh, so most of the time you're wanting to have less IGF-1, but in this sense you want to have that regrowth signal. So, um, so eating, you know, eating a, a, a balanced diet. But you know, when, when people are breaking a prolonged fast, some people have sensitivity you know, their gut's a little more sensitive if you haven't eaten for a few days, sure. you know, so, so you really have to sort of listen to your body. Kind like a some, soft landing out of it. Yeah, some people, you know, I've had people um, talk to me about taking like, you know, making a, a shake with some blueberries and they add a little bit of, you know, protein powder or right. they eat like a little small piece of salmon right. um, and some fruit. Um, other people like to kind of ease into it with some soups or bone broths and then eventually kind of make it, make it yeah. a small piece of protein or something. Um, and if but, you're talking about more circadian or like 16 eights, I mean, the thing I sort of want to emphasize here is that, you know, a lot of people use fasting as a license to kind of binge, which obviously is not a good idea. Like when you're breaking a fast, especially a longer fast, you know, giving your body a chance to adjust back to a feed, feeding state is important in eating, you know, you know, non-processed foods um, is, is super important. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that eating eating a healthy diet with you know lots of vegetables and um, you know healthy meats and right. fatty acids and things like that is important. Avoiding processed foods, avoiding refined sugar, all those things. I mean, if you're constantly eating refined sugars and, and all that, you're going to have a hard time. Your body is going to have a hard time switching over from metabolizing glucose to fatty acids. It's going to make it's going to make that transition uh, more difficult. Um, so so that's that's another thing to keep in mind as well.